Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's six o'clock in the morning here, and uh, you join me as we're about to embark on a bit of a road trip. Uh, just drinking wine. Do you like my mug? Look, nice pink mug there for my cup of tea. So, um, this here, as you know, is my Porsche Taycan. This is the days where I love this car because I've got a lot of miles to cover, over 400 miles probably, certainly eight or nine hours in the car. And uh, we're gonna be running uh, this car, but also driving this Taycan. And we'll run these two cars side by side. Uh, so you can follow us on this vlog video as we drop this car off and then go off to pick another Taycan up actually. And we're gonna be able to gather up some information here about efficiency and real world range. Now, these two cars are identical, so what's the point of that? Well, this one's had the latest uh, Porsche update, the big one. I had to go to the dealer to have an update done. Uh, update with a capital P for some reason. I can never remember the exact reason, but anyway, the update, the big one, the August 22 update. When Porsche, in the update, claims that efficiency has been improved. The way they de-energize a motor and such like has been adjusted and tweaked. And in theory, this car should be more efficient than this car. Now, there's a couple of things that are really important for efficiency, things like um, driving speed, style conditions, the alloy wheels you've got on the car. And this is where this can be a really good true test because these cars are identical. They're both Porsche Taycan 4Ss. They both have exactly the same wheels on them. Uh, let's just check about tires. I've got Pirelli. Yeah, it's got uh, Goodyear Eagles. Ooh, Pirelli is Goodyear. So maybe a tire difference there. But nonetheless, I don't think that will make too much difference. This one has not had this big update. So this car should be more efficient. We're gonna drive in convoy for a couple of hundred miles at the same speed in the same conditions and such like. So side by side comparison. And I wanna see that this one can cover more miles and uses less energy. So we're gonna go and drop that one off, uh, then doing about another 100 mile journey. And then we're actually gonna go and pick up another Porsche Taycan, uh, but that one's a turbo. Again, I think it's on the same wheels. So will the turbo be more or less efficient than a 4S? And again, we'll be able to find that sort of stuff out later on. So. Join us in this video, bit of a vlog, got a few hours in the car today, probably eight or nine hours, probably well over 400 miles to cover, an ideal day for a Porsche Taycan. So come along, join me. It's still dark outside. It's a chilly morning as well. Uh, it was reading seven degrees on the car that I drove in. These cars have been treated the same, both charged up yesterday and they're both at 95% now, both kept inside, both not used yet today. So they should be identical battery temperatures and everything like that as well. Uh, so better finish this cup of tea and we'll head off. getting up in the dark again it's gonna get harder as we get towards winter uh, let me just run through a couple of just technical bits then um, it is reading outside eight and a half degrees Celsius at the moment it is dry there's no wind uh, which is good so we're getting really warm days still but uh, hence still in shorts but cold nights now so uh, yeah winter's on its way uh, both cars were charged yesterday. We only got one charger inside, so we charged one to 95% and then the other one to top up to 95%. They both finished yesterday evening and then been stood. Uh, so the cold of battery temperatures this morning. The Porsche is one of the only cars that I think probably the only EV actually tells you your battery temperature. Uh, so both cars are 95%. Mike, for some reason, read 23 degrees Celsius. Everyone read 21 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know why they're both parked next to each other inside the same warehouse, but it is what it is. We've tried our best to make everything as even. I mean, there's only two degrees Celsius difference between them, but uh, not quite identical. On 95%, my car reads 211 miles of range. That one reads 245. But that is, uh, the range is based on how it's recently been driven. And I've obviously been driving mine more enthusiastically <laughs> so that's what it's there for isn't it so uh, right so um, we're going to just be on the road now we're not driving for efficiency we are driving to the speed limit so we're going to put range mode on because I normally would when I'm just sat on the motorway anyway you know uh, it helps with efficiency a little bit the car lowers down and the the spoiler just comes out a little bit to help with aero 
So both cars are in range mode, but we're not hyper miling. We're just driving at speed limits, basically as quick as we can go. We've got enough miles to cover today. I don't want to, you know, be hanging around, driving around at 55 miles an hour and stuff like that. So we'll go as quick as we can and uh, let's see what difference we get between the two. Okay, we're getting some really good information here. We're seeing the software update in action, exactly the differences. So as we drive along, we're actually in a bit of a roadwork section here, 50 miles an hour plus it's rush hour, but uh, let me just sit in the inside lane as we uh, I'll tell you this information. So this software, updated car, as I cruise along a motorway, is using the rear motor to drive. The front motor is doing nothing, it, unless I put my foot down and it engages. So as I'm just cruising along, maintaining speed or lightly accelerating rear motor. The other car, pre-software update, is using the front motor to do the same job. So primarily rear motor, primarily front motor. We're both in range mode. We've both got exactly the same air conditioning settings even, and we're swapping around places and all that kind of stuff. But we're seeing this motor in action here. Now, if I lift off the throttle, mine go, and it's just lightly coasting, mine goes to regen on, on the rear motor. So again, it's using just the rear motor. And, and if I uh, regen a bit more, just lightly brake, I'm now regening from both motors here. The pre, the non-software updated car, if he regens or lifts off, he is only ever regening off the rear motor. So it's front wheel drive, rear motor regen, even if he's braking a bit firmer, as we are at the moment, as we've been testing it right now on the, the motorway here. So this should, in theory, be able to decouple, you know, recover more energy because I'm recovering from both motors. Uh, but I'm driving mainly from the back motor, which normally is the bigger motor. Maybe that is more efficient than the front motor. I don't know. Porsche have obviously got reason for it, but we're seeing the two cars and the two th different things are doing in action here. So that's really interesting. Okay, back with the journey. And we'll see what else we can find out. Just a little update. So we've done 115 miles now since we left. Uh, kind of getting hungry and want a coffee, but we'll carry on for the minute. Uh, we're both running the same battery temperatures, uh, which is currently 32 degrees Celsius. We've been checking in with each other and they're exactly the same. Uh, the amount of energy used though, the software updated car, my one, does seem to be using just a little bit less energy. So it is looking promising so far, but we'll get the, um, you know, the results when we've done, uh, get to the destinations, about 185 miles in total, I think. The, uh, the, the measurement in the car for the efficiency, my car's reading 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour, but on the other car, uh, we changed the unit of measurement since we left. It was reading uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers or something, so we changed it to miles per kilowatt hour. And it just seems to have kind of crashed the efficiency calculation numbers. Now, I've seen this before. I never quite trust the uh, efficiency numbers in the Taycan. Often it just kind of seems to pause or get stuck or crash or something and doesn't actually give true figures. Uh, whether in this one 2.7 is right, seems a little bit low considering how we're just cruising on the motorway. But in the other one, it's just like complete nonsense. It's like 0 0.9 or something. So. Uh, I can't give you exact efficiency numbers reported by the car, but what we can do is tell you exactly how much energy and how much battery percentage we've used for the journey. And we can actually pro rata out what a 100% to 0% battery charge would be then as well. We did do a, a, that test on this car before, 100% to zero on uh, mainly motorway journeys like this. In fact, largely the same roads, in fact. And we got to, I think, 259 miles, 260 miles. With these wheels, these are probably some of the least efficient wheels, these uh, 21s, um, you know, are less efficient than, than I think probably all the other Taycan wheels. <laughs> so that does affect it. Like any car, wheels make actually quite a big difference to efficiency. So there are more efficient wheels and you can get 300 miles in a Taycan, not too, with the bigger battery. This has got the performance battery. They both have 93 kilowatt hours. Uh, you can get 300 miles if you have well, a kind of more efficient setup and drive it very carefully, but not me. Okay, so we've just pulled up. Uh, we haven't stopped at all, so we've just pulled up at um, Porsche Centre, Wolverhampton. This is so. Let's have a look at the timings. Uh, we've been driving for three hours, six minutes non stop. We've come to 179.9 miles, according to my car. Okay, Gintz, um, have you also got 179.9 miles? 
since uh, we left at 6.25 this morning? this morning 180.4 miles okay so we've recorded a slight difference you don't have a average consumption on that car do you because the trip computer has kind of gone funny no no i do it's very good yeah 0 0.4 miles per kilowatt hour <laughs> okay that's good then well this is showing me 2.8 but yeah the trip computer can the consumption can be a bit funny okay then right so we both left at 95 percent I've got 25% remaining. What have you got? I've got 22. So there's a 3% difference then. It's a 3% more efficient. So there we go. It is slightly more efficient. It is slightly more efficient. So we're left with 95% and uh, we've now got 25%. So I use 70 miles to do 180 miles. 70% to do 180 miles. Uh, so 100% to zero range of 257 miles, according to the consumption today. And remember before we did do a video, we drove this, and I think we did 259 point something miles. So motorway speeds, constant speed, this actually is about the same as before. However, side by side, we do seem to have a slight difference, 3% difference with efficiency. So there we go. Okay, so that will conclude our part with the efficiency comparison, the two cars side by side. Uh, we're going to charge this, drop that car off uh, just a bit further up the road actually, and then we're going to move on down to near Cardiff and we're going to collect another Taycan uh, and then take that back with us. So um, yeah, a few miles to cover, so let's top up the charge and we'll go into the Porsche Centre here and see if we can grab a coffee. Slight change of plan, these chargers are not yet commissioned, they've only just been installed. So they showed on the Porsche app that they were here, um, not in the car, so I was a little bit suspicious. Uh, and indeed they, they're here, but there were just red lights on, they're not commissioned yet, so uh, we won't be charging here after all. Although there's some destination chargers over there, so I might put that one on for a few minutes whilst we have a coffee. Uh, okay, plan B, we're just coming a couple of miles down the road to an MFG site. Look, there's uh, six bays here, 150 kilowatt charge. It's not quite as quick. Uh, not what the tire can, can take, but nonetheless a fast charge anyway. Uh, that was my fault though. Um, the car didn't say those chargers were at Porsche. I'd just seen it somewhere on an app or something. I just kind of went there, but to be fair, the car didn't show that they were there. So me being a little bit ignorant with that is uh, my fault. Not usually something I do, you should check this stuff. <laughs> anyway, there we are charging away here. What's quite good is we can just go and get a, a Costa coffee next door. Let's just check the Porsche will be taking all 150 kilowatts of this. You just plug it in and uh, yeah, here we go. 21% battery. 60 minutes to 100%. I don't need to get 100%, just need to top it up a little bit. So we're taking, yeah, 148 kilowatts. I right, do, let's go and grab a coffee and we'll be done. That is our breakfast done, Costa in hand. That was a 30 minute stop, back up to 87%. So even though those were 150 kilowatt chargers, by the time we had the bit of breakfast and coffee, we we're all good to carry on. So that's one car dropped off in Wolverhampton. We are now going to head down to a location just to north of Cardiff, so into Wales. 130 miles according to the nav. Okay, well, quick update now. It's just gone uh, three o'clock in the afternoon and we're back down, heading south, but we're over in Wales now. So we're already west of Cardiff. We went up into the valleys a little bit and uh, picked up another Porsche Taycan. Now that's a turbo um, with the same wheels actually. So we might see what his efficiency is heading back, but time's ticking on. It's a Friday afternoon. We just kind of want to get back. Uh, that car won't need to st stop and charge because it's already um, charged up from where we just left. But I will need to charge. I've currently got 24% battery, having covered 350 miles a day. Um, we had that one charge stop earlier whilst we had breakfast. That was a half an hour charge stop. Uh, but 350 miles covered. I can't get back in one go. It's 170 miles to get back. So the car's planned a little charging stop here just east of the uh, seven, so in Bristol. Uh, so a quick top up charge there and then head on home. So wish me luck for the traffic. Fingers crossed it. So that was a quick stop off at a charger in Bristol just to give me enough to get home. So that was 9% to 
I was over 28 minutes. Uh, I've got 170 miles of range again now. It's a shame, you know, what, what's obviously good with the Porsche Taycan is its charging speed. So twi- I've had to charge twice a day, and both those are only really putting 130 kilowatts from those chargers, and the Porsche can actually charge twice as quickly as that. Uh, so that was a 28 minute stop. With a faster charger, it could have been more, but the fast charger at the Porsche sensors have been out of action today. There's an Ionity at chipping on the M4, but it can get a little bit busy, especially as now it's sort of rush hour. So I was kind of decided against that in the end. Um, and I kind of I had a shop there, I could go and get some food and go to the toilet and stuff like that. So it didn't matter too much. Uh, after being in the car basically all day, 28 minutes, the stop isn't too bad at all, is it? Quite necessary, in fact. So. There we are, not quite as minimal charging time as it could have been, but that's what it is today. Uh, no great shakes. So, um, depending on the exactly which route I take, I've got about 130 miles to get back uh, to home now. Uh, Friday rush hour, it's taken a while. But hopefully it eases up as we uh, get out on the motorway here. So that's it, last leg of the journey now get myself home for Friday evening. Right then, that's me back home. 7 p.m. So, yeah. 30 now a day, no problem. Uh, 520 miles that was in the end. Uh, my average for the day, according to this, 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. I wasn't hanging around on the way back there, but then there was some heavy traffic as well, so it's been a bit of a slog of a day. So, um, yeah, that was my day. What did we gather though? So, it was really interesting to run the uh, this software updated car versus the pre software updated car. It did seem to be that little bit more efficient, but we could clearly see what Porsche have done to change that, and that this was primarily rear-wheel drive, the other one was primarily front-wheel drive. There's a little bit of difference in how they regen energy as well. Um, whether it's from the, the four wheels, and on the other one, it would drive the front, but regen from the back a bit more and stuff like that. So, um, but after a 180 mile journey, there was a 3% uh, state of charge difference, both 93 kilowatt hour battery packs, by the way, as well. Um, so yeah, a little bit, every little helps, doesn't it? And uh, no doubt there'll be sort of constant software updates, improvements, hopefully over the air, which we'll keep tweaking little bits and pieces. Um, but that was obviously quite a big change, uh, literally which motor it uses to drive the car, doesn't it? So that was interesting. So that was 520 miles. Um, if you draw a line from London to Bern in Switzerland, that is less than that. Uh, Edinburgh to London is 420 miles, 100 miles more than that. Um, so a fair day there on the road, 10 hours, 29 minutes. This car's been on since 6.25 this morning, so you can see it's been pretty full on. Uh, that time on will include some time which has been on and yet we've been parked and stuff like that. But we had a 31 minute charge stop and 28 minute charge stop. Both of those charges about half the speed that the car could charge, but even then, to be honest, not a problem. Those brakes were needed and we made use of them as ever to eat, drink, go to the toilet and stuff like that. So um, there we go. I think I'm just gonna call it a wrap for that video. Oh, coming back, uh, this car versus the uh, Taycan Turbo. We didn't get a chance to run that side by side. It would have been interesting to see efficiency differences, but there's two elements to that. One is uh, that car hadn't really been used today, so it would have had colder battery and stuff. Um, and then secondly, I had to go off and charge and then it went a different way um, to take that car straight back to the unit and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we didn't get the chance to run those two side by side. Probably not really any difference in efficiency and such like anyway. It takes X amount of energy to move through the air. So I don't think we'd have really seen much there anyway. Uh, so we'll just call that a wrap for 520 miles in a day in a Porsche Taycan and uh, that's it for me. Over and out, Ginsu just walk out the road, I think we're going to go for a beer, I think we deserve it. All right, we'll see you all in the next video, thank you for watching and as always try and subscribe to our uh, other social media platforms as well, so just look up RACV, give the video a like, leave a comment and share us about and we'll see you on the next video. See you then. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram, just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook, 
and Twitter. So lots of news stories and things as we go on each one of those channels.